Welcome back. Keith Hillier has joined us for racing. What a sensational day around Australia with uh, Stephen King getting two months on his winning ride on Let's Elope. Remember, in the Melbourne Cup, he got six weeks. He intends to appeal, but if he doesn't appeal, he'll be out until April the 22nd. And Keith, that's a lot of money between now and April the 22nd for a jockey. No, we're talking multi, uh, hundreds of thousands, Bruce, because he'll miss firstly, in big race-wise, the two-thirds of a million dollar Australia Cup, then the million dollar BMW at Rose Hill. And that's only with Let's Elope, of course, uh, Star of the Realm coming back and all these other good mounts. A very costly penalty, and he does, as you mentioned, intend to appeal. And what about Scalacci? Uh, we gave Lee Friedman a bit of stick last week, for mentioning that it might be in the Manicato class, but he might be in the Placid Art class because he's two-thirds of the way to the Triple Crown. Yes, only one horse has ever won the Triple Crown. That was Placid Art. Uh, so he's two-thirds of the way there. I spoke uh, this morning with uh, the handicapper and uh, a penalty won't be announced until tomorrow. Alan Wicks is waiting on that and incidentally it's an intriguing situation Bruce because Alan Wicks is handicapping his first new market handicap. He's done the Oakley Plate 17 times but under the shared arrangement he is now handicapping all sprint races in Melbourne. So he's uh, mulling over that for another 24 hours. So what's happened, Jim Bowler's doing the staying races and Alan Wicks is doing the sprint. So last week with Lee saying Mr Bowler, it made no difference at all, did it? Made no difference. <laughs> His appeal uh, fell on the wrong ears. <laughs> Incidentally, uh, other news, uh, your comment didn't fall on deaf ears recently when you were critical of the VRC not providing uh, a race for us to show on the sports world. And uh, that has been changed. The VRC are public relations minded and they will change that, they will announce that tomorrow that in future, in controversial circumstances, uh, we can show a race uh, without comment, which I think is fair enough, except to identify horses at different stages. Okay, well that, that is good news, Keith. Let's go to the Oakley Plate, the race for the fastest horses in Australia and Scalacci, well he won the Lightning last week, the Oakley now, two thirds of the way and will he win the new market? Here's the Oakley. A bit further back is Joanne being hard ridden, did he do it? Uh, and then Sonic Express, a length and a half to Umatilla, who's well back, followed by Blue Boss Napoleon. Uh, Zephyrata second last as they make the home turn, and Grandiose is last as they straighten up where Noble Lancer is the leader. Scalacci down the outside, running on pretty well, followed by My Satin Star. Dark Bow is back behind the Mr. Cube from a long way back at All Arch here. Scalacci on the outside has taken the lead with a hundred to go from Noble Lancer, and Dark Bow running on well, followed by Mr. Cube. But Scalacci's in front, uh, and Scalacci, here comes Dark Bow. Too late, Scalacci's won it. Dark Bow is second, Dapper's Hope is third. Well, Damien Oliver was going to ride Dark Bow at one stage because he didn't know Scalacci was running and he's jumped onto Scalacci. Joanne's interesting. The first time she hasn't started a favourite in a race, she doesn't fire as well in Melbourne. No, she carried a kilo more than the weight uh, she carried in defeat last year and she's... Uh, She's not one at Group 1, so maybe there is a measure to her ability. Scalacci, incidentally, Bruce set a, a race and track record, so he's really flying. But I wonder whether he can uh, run the 1,200 metres of the new market handicap. I've got a doubt, personally. Well, that's interesting, because Lee Friedman's talking about maybe the George Main stakes after the new market. That's a mile at Randwick. Um, yes. I'm a bit... I've got a feeling that you think you'll get run over in the new market. And I've got a... I hate to say it, I tend to agree with you. I've got a feeling mm. they might get to him in the last 100 metres. Yeah, well, if we're agreeing, we <laughs> might both be wrong. <laughs> He's a certainty to win the Triple Crown sure, now. Absolutely. <laughs> you better back him. But no, I think they might get... Do you notice the run of the third horse there uh, getting home very strongly? Oh, Dapper's Hope was a great run too. It was a big run. <laughs> Would have won perhaps another 50 metres. Yes, Keith. Um, let's elope. Let's elope. What well, she think? was fantastic. Uh, she is simply the best. She uh, looked to be under pressure a long way from home. Uh, yesterday, yet she got up and won. And after the race, Dr. Jeff Chapman, trainer of Dr. Grace, went crook at Admiral Rouse, who devised the weight for age scale about uh, 170 years ago. He said it's ridiculous now that uh, that mares should get uh, weight uh, from male horses. And uh, you didn't, I ring, don't know. didn't ring the Admiral this morning, did you? Didn't ring the Admiral, <laughs> but uh, it stood the test of time, except the Doc now wants it changed. Okay, well, he's been controversial, the Doc, in the past, and he's been proven to be right on a number of occasions. He's a great trainer. Let's have a look. Dr. Grace, let's elope this thrilling jewel in the St. George. Prince O'Leary being hard ridden at the 600 where Shivano Miss was the leader by a length in advance of Dublin Lad and Dr Grace Brashia lets a lope second last and Prince O'Leary last of all as they round the home turn the pressure's on 450 left to go Shivano Miss is being tackled by Dr Grace and here comes the big mare lets a lope around the outside Brashia's back behind them Prince O'Leary can't go on 300 metres left to go now and Shivano Miss is tackled by Dr Grace and lets a lope is down the outside and then Prince O'Leary down inside the final 200 
Dr. Grace on the outside, Siobhan Amis and Litzelope is joining in. Dr. Grace is the leader close to home. Litzelope the outside, they hit it. Litzelope, Litzelope by a head on the line to Dr. Grace with Siobhan Amis third. Keith, we were talking to Jeff Fennick about this long unbeaten run he's got at the moment. I mean, Litzelope has been beaten, but she's building up and building up six in a row. Um, goes into the Australian Cup now against Shivers Revenge. They were two to one equal favourites before that race yesterday. Which way are you leaning? I'm sticking with Let's Elope at this stage, Bruce. I think only uh, Rain could beat her. She's a duffer on the wet where Shiva's Revenge likes it. Uh, there's prob probably still not much between them, betting-wise, but does seem to have it parcelled up. Although uh, Jeff Chapman thinks that he can uh, get revenge with Dr Grace. The weights swing around a kilo, I think, on the Australian Cup, but uh, yesterday, two and a half kilos, uh, she was playing off the ladies' tee. Well, <laughs> she was yeah. playing off the ladies' tee and she won again. I hate to go against you here, but Shivers will beat her in the Australian Cup. All right, shilling on the side there. We're dead. You'd still have a shilling too, I bet you. <laughs> OK, um, superimposed, didn't really fire. Uh, the, the riding tactics were a bit different yesterday. Mm. Seemed to make uh, a couple of runs under the circumstances of the race, Bruce, and uh, he has not won at weight for age at Randwick in five tries. Uh, it's remarkable when you consider that he's won those big four handicap races. Yes, the Doncaster and the Epsom uh, a double-double. Uh, he's going to have another shot in the Chipping Norton Stakes in two weeks' time. Okay. Sixth attempt. OK, let's, uh, number six might be lucky. Quick score, very impressive, coming back after going to Hong Kong and failing there, but uh, what's for superimposed? Doesn't really ping in the straight. Cashano puts on the speed at the 600 mark and kicked away, led by about three lengths on Enjoy Dancing. Stargaze a third, quick score fourth, and then not related, and here comes the big red horse, superimposed, looming up three and four deep as they come around the corner. Further back, Maharaja, followed by Demi Dahar and Magnolia Hall. Superimposed seemed to brush there with not related as they come over the rise. Enjoy Dancing put the head in front, tackled by quick score, and then Stargazer, superimposed, is taking an age to get going. Quick score with superior acceleration dash clear close to home superimposed wide out running into second place not related running a hell of a race but quick score is holding them safely at bay and goes on to win well superimposed second third not related it's one eight out of 15 quick score he's now eight to one favorite for the Doncaster ten to one superimposed yes uh, and also Bruce the return yesterday of Terse and Big Dreams and I think the race showed what a difference a barrier makes yes let's go to that race uh, Terse trapped very wide all the way Big Dreams are uh, belting through in the straight to win Gap then to Delphinus as they come to the turn, followed by Kinjate and Merlot was last around the corner. And with the inside running, Barnia Boy just led over Red Tonic and Tursus three deep on the corner. Top comedian has to go four wide. Big Dreams follows them over the rise, is looking for a split between horses. And then Bella Snap followed by Sedgwin. Further back, March Ons and Botany View as they come to the 200 mark where Terse, it looks to be struggling a bit. Big Dreams has got past him and it's Big Dreams coming after Red Tonic. Down the outside is Bella Snap and Botany view but big dream shot clear close to home over Bella Snap Terse and Sedge winners getting home well big dreams too good and won the Royal Sovereign Bella Snap is second thirds very close Sedge win or Terse well he is outstanding he's won eight out of 14 I thought Terse's run was very very good I'm not sure whether he's the super horse that we expected he would be though I think there's still a question mark over him uh, I want to be on him in the next rematch between that pair okay I'm, I might not argue with that but I don't know if he's all conquering uh, no. he is very good what about the run of office yesterday in the Light Fingers? It was an extraordinary performance, oh, wasn't it? Came from near last and uh, swamped them. OK, have a look at it. Uh, out of the picture almost with 100 metres to go and watch this thrilling performance by office. Couple of lengths away, Palace beat, followed by Never Say and then Richfield Lady. A good gap to Zephyr Lira and Office is back last as they go by the 600 metres mark. Little Eber on the fence just led Regina Madre with Archery Wood making a line of three. On the outside of them, W Bet take the road very deep and struggling a bit as they turn for home, followed by High Precious and then Liquibis, Palace beat and Richfield Lady flat to the boards making no headway at the moment as they top the hill. Regina Madre just the leader, W Bet is running a big race though. W Bet coming after Regina Madre. Regina Madre still in front. W Bet trying hard to pick her up. Russell getting desperate on the favourite. Regina Madre, W Bet, and look at Office swamping them. She's come from nowhere. Office, she's come from last and got up to win. An amazing performance. Office got up to beat Regina Madre. Third W Bet. Four in a row. Shane Dye's ride was brilliant. What did you think of Richfield Lady in that? The, uh, the, the champion from the spring. Yeah, very disappointing, but she has had some problems. One of the highlights at Randwick yesterday, uh, Bruce, was uh, TJ 
50 years of trainer, got to meet the Queen. Yes, Tommy Smith, uh, he had a chance a few years ago when Brewery Boy won the South Australian Derby, but when the Queen was present, Her Majesty, and presented the trophy, but Tommy was sick that day and couldn't go, so it was excellent for him yesterday Great. that liquidity could win. Not a bad horse, this uh, seven-year-old from New Zealand, and uh, TJ's having a big run with him. Let's go to the Queen's Cup, and uh, the race of liquidity comes with a flashing run to win. Up towards the turn with 500 left to go. Well chilled as clear of Yarra Bay and Rass and Vane, followed by Melko. Then Cross Swords out very deep as Garfunkel. On the fence behind them, Ta Lee, followed by Aquidity. And Mr. Eurostar has pulled to the extreme outside, and just in front of him is just Tommy. As they come over the rise, Rass and Vane has raced up to head well chilled. Cross Swords in third place. Ta Lee is running on well, followed by Aquidity. And Mr. Eurostar coming home well, but spotting them too much start. Rass and Vane has drawn clear 100 out from Cross Swords and Aquidity on the outside. Rass and Vane tackled by Aquidity. Aquidity coming home the best has pounced on them right on the line and Aquidity got up to win the Queen's Cup from Rass and Vane and Cross Swords. And apparently after the race the Queen said to Shane Dye, you left it late. <laughs> <for the laughs> she jockey. did too. That's right. <laughs> Bruce, uh, Blue Diamond Day next week. Uh, Vertingly will trial in Blinkers at Flemington on Tuesday to try to do what Canonise did last year. Marhassan the year before win the race first time in Blinkers for the stable. Well, I want to be on him, don't you? Yep, I do. Well, that's a good sign, Keith. OK, catch you next Sunday. Look forward to it. What have I got you for lunch as well? Oh, I might come. <laughs> <laughs> does cook a good barbecue. We'll take a break. Rowing after this. Catch tonight. The eve of the race, the second favourite. Shocking luck for his connections and for the series. And then last night, the favourite, Christopher Vance, the mighty New Zealander, finishing last in his heat. And who knows, he might miss out now on the final. He's got the job in front of him. Our special guest today is Vic Frost, the man behind Westburn Grant. He's been three times the Grand Circuit champion, twice the Miracle Mile champion, and maybe now the winner of the Inter-Dominion. Who knows, he ran a great race last year. And Neil Donnelly, who's uh, the media representative from the Harness Racing Board and one of the top journalists in Australia. Welcome, Vic and Neil, once again. Thank you. Thanks well, what a start, Neil, to the Inter-Dominion. We were talking last week that we thought Christopher Vance, Franco Ice and Westburn Grant were the three big chances. Really, Vic's horse is the only one that's standing tall at the moment. Well, yeah. Uh, Inter Dominion's traditionally a, a full of drama. The first night, all sorts of things always seem to happen, and last night it was just that way. Uh, as you mentioned, Franco Ice out sat yesterday morning, failed the vet test, didn't run. And then uh, the four-year-old impressionist, who we mentioned last week, was a sensational run winning the first heat. Most impressive, is now favourite to win the final. An hour later, Christopher Vance, two's on, leads and runs last. OK, we've mentioned impressionists. This four-year-old, Ted Demler, training driving. Let's go to the first of the heats and uh, see this most impressive performance by a horse aptly named. Metre boy held together by two and a half metres to impression is shaken up and Thomas Magnum out three wide. No run for tip top Prince out three wide. Mark Hanover he's about to pull out four wide. Then in such of the centre followed by Starship and Defoe. Then Franco Tiger Meadow Mirage and last is Appen on lad around the turn of the 250. All metre boy held together still a metre and a half to on the outside. Impressionist now bridging the gap pulling out now. Mark Hanover running home. Impressionist on the outside of the 120. He raced to the lead. All metre boy cannot go on. Mark Hanover, Thomas Magnum in such a boxing on for the minors, but this is a big win. Most impressive by Impressionist. He wins six metres to All metre boy. Tight third, Mark Hanover. Well, Vic, you've seen a fair bit of Impressionist. He's, he is a four-year-old. Four-year-olds can win the Inter Dominion. I, I tend to think they're still a little immature. How, how do you fancy his chances? Oh, yeah, I think uh, Impressionist ran a tremendous race last night. Like, you know, he'd, he'd done a lot of work to sort of work around the field, and uh, he, he really finished strong in the straight, which uh, I thought was a very, very good run. And uh, uh, if he gets a little bit of luck in the final, he'd have to be real hard to beat. New, obviously, you liked his run last night. What about Mark Hanover, the defending champion? It looked a pretty good performance. It was a fair run, to be honest. Uh, You'll notice we saw in the heat there, uh, Thomas Magnum, the Tasmanian horse, he was three wide and Mark Hanover tracked him home. But he'd been three wide for more than a lap before the turn and Mark Hanover couldn't run him down in the straight. Uh, honest run, best I could say for him. OK, so you're still not really fancying him, are you? Because I've you... never liked Mark Hanover, no. No, not even when he won the Inter Dominion last I year? I hated him last year when I was on the other two. <laughs> <laughs> you might be holding a grudge here, Neil. Yeah. <laughs> well, the second heat was an upset, wasn't it? Oh, very much so. It, it looked uh, the weakest heat with Christopher Vance appearing to just be too strong. And, uh, and as we'll see on the tape, he leads and runs blistering sectional times. Around his first mile in about 56 and a half. Do you think he was poorly driven on, on reflection? No, well, Tony Hurley, he said later, his driver, and Tony's a champion driver, he, uh, he said that 
it was probably his own fault in that he was told there was no speed inside him and he decided to come out from a wide draw. And he said he fired the horse up early and he got to pulling, which he said he doesn't do very often, and he couldn't hold him. He said he just went too hard. What do you think of Christopher Vance? Uh, you've seen a lot of him, Vic, in the past with Westbury and Grant taking him on in those Miracle Mile. Yes, yes, he's a very, very smart horse, and uh, he, he's won a lot of races since then, like you know, some some major races. And uh, I, I thought he was probably uh, before the series started. I thought he was probably the horse to beat. Uh, I, I thought he was a true favourite for the race. But um, and uh, you know, although he didn't sort of go so good last night, uh, he's still a very good horse, and, and uh, I think. Uh, uh, Tony will be able to sort of settle him down a little bit in the next couple of heats and I think he'll, he'll grab some, some valuable points. Can he still make the final, Neil? Yes, he can. The, the structure this year on the points system is that if you win a heat, you get four bonus points. And if you run second, you get two bonus points. So first and second is very important. You can, you can jump ladders if you, if you win a heat. I think if he wins a heat and, and runs a placing the last night, he'll make the final. And he has drawn, drawn to win on Wednesday night. OK, let's go to the second heat. Big upset here. The long odds on favourite finishing last, Christopher Vance. Generator in the centre. He's not going well. No run for Barrel Boy. Then Lord Muckley. Sir Mo Way. Thorate. Zululu. It's Motor Power. Imperial Adamant. Six metres away. Rhetoric. 400 metres out before the turn. And Zakara on the outside. Drew two. Three metres in front. Christopher Vance. He's under tremendous pressure. Lord Muckley. He's looking a chance. He pulls to the outside now. Three wide. Christopher Vance looked gone. Then Barrel Boy needing a run. Followed by Generator. And Zululu is seeing daylight making ground at the 100. 80, Zakara in front by two metres to Lord Muckley. Zulu Lou is making ground down the outside. Christopher Vance has gone at the 100. Zakara in front, picking it up on the outside is Zulu Lou with Lord Muckley in the centre. Lord Muckley put its nose in front and Lord Muckley has one in a photo from either Zulu Lou and Zakara. Well, easily his most impressive performance, Lord Muckley, but uh, Neil, you were making the point there that those horses were getting very tired up the straight and you think the form mightn't be too good. I just don't know what to make of the form, Bruce, yeah, because uh, there were so many horses finished in a bunch, and it's the same on a, on a thoroughbred racetrack. You, if they all finish together, you sometimes be wary about the form. I just don't know about it. Vic, what do you think? Uh, Franco, I scratched. Christopher Vance running last. I mean, it must help Westbury and Grant's chances. Was that your thoughts after the first two heats? Um, <clears throat> well... No, I didn't sort of look at it like that because uh, I know Christopher Vance is, is a very good horse and uh, uh, he sort of, he didn't go so good last night, um, but there were excuses for him. He got fired up and then uh, Tony couldn't sort of settle the horse in, in the race, but uh, and they did go very, very fast early. And I think a horse that um, <coughs> comes out of a wide gate like he did and uh, making the pace that, that, that fierce early, uh, you know, like all horses will knock up. They'll all get tired. OK, well, Vic was driving the, the great Westburn Grant in the third heat. This horse has been the champion in Australia for a number of years. It's won $1.7 million and they're hoping to win his first Inter-Dominion in 1992. Let's go to the race. We uh, pick it up in the concluding stages. Westburn Grant outside the leader, who Neil reckons is the most improved horse in the world. A neck away on the outside, Blossom Lady, followed by On Parade, then Amendment. Second last is Sogo and four metres to Imprimata. Down the back inside the 500 they race, level advice. He leads Westburn Grant by a metre. He's got a kick up his sleeve though. Blossom Lady pulls out now three wide around, Master Musician. The leader's back is Smooth Genghis. On Parade under the whip now pulls to the outside, Amendment's under pressure. Then which Melody, Sogo still second last and last is Imprimata. Third quarter, 29-4, around the turn, 220 metres out. Level advice, shaken up a metre in front. Westburn, Grant on the outside is trying to pick him up, followed by Smooth Genghis and getting out as master musician. At the 100, they level advice. Oh, by golly, he's much improved. He's pulling out plenty. He's pulling out enough, and he gets there. Level advice wins a metre and a half to Westburn, Grant. Third, Smooth Genghis. Well, why is he the most improved horse in the world? He's won a string of races. Well, if you'd said six months ago that level advice would be winning against handy horses at Mooney Valley, you would have been laughed at. And here he is winning a heat of the Inter Dominion, beating Westburn Grant, and is 12 to 1 to win the final. He is the most improved horse in the world. <laughs> OK, I won't argue with that. Vic, what about Westburn Grant? What did you think of the run? Uh, I thought it was a real good run. Uh, I, was, I was very happy with his race. Um, you know, he'll probably uh, get the benefit of that run now, like for the next couple of heats, and uh, uh, which should sort of top him off, like, you know, nicely. So, uh, yeah, I, I was real pleased with the run, like, you know. The query on him, uh, to be fair, is that, OK, he's probably the most brilliant horse we've had for many, many years, but will he stand up 
to four tough races in two weeks. I think he will. I think he will, Bruce. Uh, yeah, he, 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 he's virtually a sort of tough type of horse. Uh, he's a good doer, like, you know, he's a relaxed type, good eater. And uh, we, we train him on the beach as well, so, you know. Sounds we, like he's got a good life, doesn't yeah. he? He's relaxed, he eats well and he goes to the beach. Yeah. <laughs> I know a couple of blokes like that. Yeah, yeah so do I, actually. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's see what the bookmakers think, because that's the market and that's all important. What a difference a week yeah. makes. I mean, you wouldn't read about this, Neil, would you? Well, impressionist, he was 8-1 to one last Sunday morning, uh, Bruce, and after his win last night, well, he's into favourite, as we can see. Whispering Ground has held his place. Where's Christopher Vance? Is he, should he be on Vance, the board? He, well, he should be in there, actually. He should be there about 11 to 2. Uh, OK. So we can put him in at 11 to 2 in between yeah. Westbury and Grant and Master Musicians. Yeah. Uh, and the level of advice, of course, he was 100 to 1 a week ago. All right. And four of the favourites running against each other on Wednesday night. So the heats continue Wednesday night, next Saturday night. And uh, Neil, you'll be back next Sunday. And yes. Maybe we'll know then uh, just uh, who might win the final because it'll only be six days away. Well, we'll have the final field and uh, we'll have a, a, real, a market. We won't have the barrier draw. It's not done till the following Wednesday, but we'll have a good idea. OK. Vic, good luck with Westby and Grant. It'll be terrific to see him when he's won everything else in, in harness racing and he thoroughly deserves it. Thanks very much, Bruce. Vic Frost, uh, the man behind the great Westby and Grant. We take a break and coming up after the break, John Seaman.